You're listening to Boobies and Newbies, brought to you by the Frolic Podcast Network. This episode is brought to you by The Rancher Meets His Match, the fourth book in Kate Pierce's Millers of Morgan Valley series. Now, if you're a longtime listener of Boobies and Newbies, you know that we love Kate Pierce books on this podcast. In fact, one of my very best friends and favorite guests of all time, Michelle Jace, and I have reviewed not one, not two, but three, that's right, three Western romances by Kate Pierce. Now, this is the fourth book in the Millers of Morgan Valley, a spinoff of Kate's successful Morgan Ranch series. Trust me, I've read them all. And this series focuses on a neighboring family with their own ranch and problems of the heart, because who doesn't have those? I love contemporary Western romance, and if you're a fan of Jennifer Ryan or Lindsay McKenna, then I know that you will love Kate Pierce. Get ready for swoons, laughs, childhood nemeses falling in love. The rancher meets his match, has it all in spades. Or should I say, horseshoes. The rancher meets his match is available now wherever books are sold. Pick up a copy today. And now... Back to the show. Welcome to Poopies and Newbies, the podcast that asks novice romance readers to think outside the dick in a box and brave the unbridled world of erotica. I'm your host, Kelly Reynolds, and today marks our first romance review for 2021. As you might have heard during last week's interview with Melissa Croce, I've decided to mix things up for the fourth season of Boobies and Newbies by selecting a theme for each month's reading. This month's theme is Cheers! And honestly, I could not think of a better book to celebrate a new year and a new season with. To find out more about our upcoming books and themes, you can check us out on Patreon at patreon.com slash boobiespodcast. And please join us next Wednesday, January 27th, for our first Boobies and Newbies book club, IGTV edition. We will be discussing Blame It on the Champagne by Fiona Cole. And just for showing up, you'll be entered to win our book club giveaway. So I hope to see you all there. Today's guest is by no means a romance newbie, as she currently hosts Deconstructing Damsels, a romance novel review podcast. However, she is a newbie to guesting on other people's podcasts, so please join me in welcoming one of my favorite podcasters, Jessica Hannon. Thank you so much, Kelly. You give me such a good intro. I love it. I do try. I do. You know, I feel like maybe 2021 is going to be the year that I start freelancing to write introductions for podcast guests because apparently that's something that I do well that I didn't even know. Look, you introduce me. I forget 99% of the time. And I have to go back through and I like when I make my intros and my outros, I make them different every time. Like I make them mm. as I go. I don't have like an insert. And so, and so I'm like, you know, I know this is starting kind of late, but this is the person <laughs> and you're starting in the middle of our conversation. Sorry. Well, you know what? That's what makes your podcast unique. That's, that's one of the reasons I love listening to the My Worst Date podcast as well is they never start by introducing themselves and it, it's like a drinking game. It's you just keep listening until you're like, oh my gosh, how long are we going to go until they introduce themselves? And it usually comes in around like the 20 minute mark. And I just, I love it. I love, it's like a fun guessing game. I I feel better about it. Than I let my guests talk at the end so people know where to find them. I was like, but you know, they probably should know their first name first. <laughs> You know, just to have like a small indicator, whatever. I mean, you know, I the amount of times I've listened to a podcast or watched an interview and had no idea who was talking, then 
who cares? <laughs> well, if people want to guess, if they want to like guess on somebody, they got to know. Yeah. Well, I'm glad that you're here. And obviously people know this is Jessica Hannon. I'll just have to keep saying your name. <laughs> Jessica Hannon is here um, from Deconstructing Damsels. <laughs> Jessica Hannon. Yes. Um, here to talk about... <laughs> Our first book of the season, and I'm so excited that we Me read too. this one because we, so we were just talking about, yeah, we were just talking about um, in a little bonus excerpt that'll be hitting Patreon soon, how we both are like trying to read different authors this year, different tropes, different genres, just to mix up our reading. So um, I'm excited that this was the one we started with. Me too, because it was so good. It was like such a nice, like, it wasn't the first one I finished for the year, but it was like the best one that had finished for the year so it was like really nice to well not but like the first week of the year to me that's a whole year it's just mm-hmm. quarantine times <laughs> uh, <laughs> so but for the first part like it was like such a nice way to end that week because i was like oh this is the other ones were just like not hitting the mark but this one hit everything mm. like i was just like oh this is so good oh good i'm I glad well it. and i'm sure i'm sure as a contemporary queer romance it was probably a nice change of pace because you've been reading a lot of historical romance (laughs) lately for a -a readathon right yeah um peace love books xo jessica um remarkably lisa and lacy book loves or book lovers um they all are doing a historical romance readathon this weekend so i've been like Mm. chewing through through them i've read like five in three days (laughs) oh my god and and historical romances i mean for me usually take a little bit longer to like read and digest as opposed to contemporary so kudos to you for for making it through so quickly so many books oh and see like we're the opposite because for me historicals are my comfort because i remember reading like I actually remember the Fabio covers. I was reading those books. Oh. So I actually have memories of that. So like to me, historical romance is like one of the most comfortable places you can put me. I love that. So you got your start reading romance by reading historical romances? Yeah. Like the like the zebra imprints with the holograms and stuff. Yeah. Because mm. my godmother. So I, have, I had two godmothers. It was a mother and daughter. And the elder one would read the romances and my other one and my other godmom would read John Saul. I was not a John Saul fan. So I just naturally kind of moved into that. And I was also reading like Sweet Valley High and stuff like that at the time. So to me, like the the bodice strippers are just like home, <laughs> you know, I was like maybe like nine or ten when I started reading those. I love that. <laughs> Yeah, it's so and you I love know what? It. I'm sure I'm sure that's more common with a lot of romance readers um because I know for me I started with contemporary so I feel like maybe that's why that's my go to and my comfort place is because that's where my roots are with romance yep. but for you it's historical romance the holographic covers oh my god yeah <laughs> like I used to love those like I'm so mad when I moved to Germany that I could not like find any to bring I also couldn't bring any because I was like who has room in their luggage but like <laughs> I mean there's a weight limit on luggage guys so it's true. um and so like I only had two suitcases so I couldn't bring a lot of books so my mom sent me some category romances over mm. and so like on the Patreon I'm gonna have like category corner where I'm gonna read like a category romance like once a month or once every two months and just kind of like and they're like old romances for the most part like some of them from the 90s but a lot of them are from the 80s and 70s and stuff that i've well, been collecting and, since i've been here and as a deconstructing damsels hosted by jessica hannon jessica hannon deconstructing damsels <laughs> as a deconstructing damsels patron I am very excited about that corner. So I am very excited to hear what you've got because I I feel like that's a little more outside of what I grew up reading. And so I'm excited to learn something from you. And please, please tell everybody where they can find Deconstructing Damsels, both on Patreon and beyond. Okay. So I'm very simple. I have everything at (laughs) Damsels Podcast. Literally everything you can find. I'm at Damsels podcast damselspodcast.com twitter facebook instagram is all at damsels podcast and email is damselspodcast at gmail.com oh my I gosh made a, 
across the board so that way I couldn't forget the login information. <laughs> yeah, there, I was going to say it's so easy for your listeners. And I was like, well, she's probably thinking, hell, it's easy for me. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. And like, you know, Patreon is also Damsel's podcast. Yeah. Yeah. So just take the boobies out of boobies podcast and replace it with damsels and you're set. (laughs) Exactly. Like, you know, branding is so much easier when you can remember what it is. It's true. Again, it's not for the listeners. It's for us. Because well, I'm like, I don't remember my name. What do you want me to know remember for else? It's a lot, especially this day and age. I mean, like you said, 20, 2020 was like an eight year time period. 2021, <laughs> we've only had a couple weeks of and it already feels like another <laughs> couple years. Like it's the, <laughs> it's the epilogue. It's the epilogue that won't end. Like it just keeps going. I, I just am chalking it all up to still being part of of 2020 like I refuse to acknowledge that this is the new year you know, because it's just it's not like, have you like so Allison Pregler is um a, a person on YouTube that reviews movies and stuff and she was reading Model Land okay by Tyra Banks Model Land that big oh. tome of a book yes and this yes. is like this is like the this is like the epilogue to Model Land <gasps> oh god we, so what's the, <laughs> what's the moral? Like we all need to smile with our eyes more. Like everybody starts smiling. No. <laughs> no, no. Tyra just needed to have some therapy and refused to go to a therapist. And so she makes all the characters go through her issues. Just like her show. So oh. it's just like the show. Yeah, it is really like if you do think about it. I, it, I mean, America's Next Top Model is basically like Tyra's acting out her Barbie fantasies and like tragedies on screen yes, with like yes. real life Barbies and Kens. Oh my God. And there was like, there's a guy named um, Oliver Twixt and he interviews some of the contestants from the show. Great. It's on, it's on YouTube. <laughs> and I'm just like, I'm learning so much. Thank you. All my, all my feelings were valid back in like 2000 and you know, six yeah. when I was watching this for the first time. <laughs> I will say that that is one of the shows where I want to say they have a lot of it on streaming for like Hulu or Mm -hmm. Amazon, one of them, but they, um, right around like the holidays, they released the more recent seasons on Netflix. I don't really understand like what's going on. Like Netflix picked up (laughs) some of the oldest seasons of the challenge, which I used to work on. And then are you the one, but then they have the more recent seasons of America's next top model. So I, I started 2021 with like, ridiculous binging of bad reality show and so I'm just I'm so confused by like what's going on with TV right now well well, to be fair okay so they couldn't really do a whole lot of filming for a while right so they have to fill the gaps but I'm like but 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 couldn't you have gotten like the surreal life instead like (laughs) something interesting yeah, I don't know. It just seems like a weird choice, like between those three shows, all of which I admit to watching when they were both on the air and also afterwards. Yeah. But I just, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I will say I did watch the um, the America's Next Top Model because they're the more recent seasons where they feature men and women. Yeah. Um, and I thought that was kind of like a fun, fun take, although I got super mad when they kept telling the androgynous male model that he needed to look more masculine i was just like you shut the fuck up tyra <laughs> right like look we know you have issues from your time in modeling we 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 don't have to hear it all the time we all heard you yelling at tiffany so we all yeah. know <laughs> she was rooting for her we were all rooting for her <laughs> yes. which by the way if if people don't know what we're talking about literally go on to youtube Look up Tyra yelling at Tiffany, and it will make your day. It's like, and like, um, was, she was like, you know, my I never yell at girls like this, but my mother yells at me that she's doing this because she loves me, and I'm like, she loves me, she cares. <laughs> I don't think that's love, Tyra. It's that's fantastic. what we don't want to read in romance books. <laughs> yep, exactly. It, it's the whole idea of like, oh, he's teasing you and pulling your hair. Mm-hmm. You know why? Because he loves you. <laughs> right? I'm like, I, I don't think that's how that word works. Yeah, it's great. It's, it's a, one of my it's favorite clips from mm-hmm. America's Next Top Model. I love it. I, I've watched so many like reaction videos on YouTube 
because like we don't have tv like we don't have hulu we have netflix but german netflix is not nearly as good as american netflix <laughs> and I, i'm not paying for a vpn sorry um and so you know we don't have a lot of options so i just watch a lot of youtube okay that's not that's how i watch my hallmark movies at the end of every year <gasps> yes uh <laughs> that that's exactly why there was so many on patreon that time. <laughs> we literally watched like four movies in one day you see so many things on youtube with next american sex top model it's like there's true. a photographer that does the reaction videos after seeing the photos and she's just like what how why what yeah, no, just like, I, I, like I do. You. Actually, now that you mention it, and I'm not as well versed in YouTube, but like I definitely, I think what it is is I'll watch one video and it'll lead to another, lead to another. Mm -hmm. And so it doesn't happen often, but when it does, I go down a rabbit hole. And so uh -huh. there is one guy I like where um, he watches, he's a hairdresser. And so yes. when he watches the America's Next Top Model makeovers he like critiques them as they do the makeover like he'll he'll say yeah. oh wow that was a really poor choice or ooh maybe that would have looked better as a blonde or and normal most of the time he hates them like he's like these are oh, terrible yeah. um but he does always pick which is a... valid because we all believe we, i mean we mostly yes. all agree to that one yeah. yeah he usually does pick a winner though for each for yep. each season like he'll be like okay this person clearly had like the best look and most of the time it's somebody who like just had their hair like blown out and like maybe a couple <laughs> inches trimmed <laughs> yeah like oh god i was i was actually watching that the other day and it was like his name was like mondo or something and i was watching him as like brad mondo i think and i was watching him and um he like they did one season where it was like someone got like a shortcut even pixier cut and and like dark hair and he's like this is the best one and i'm like they 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 put black dye in her hair and took off like <laughs> two inches like yeah gave her an extra <laughs> it's true sometimes that's all it takes like the the severe makeovers on america's next top model are usually either like super hit or super miss <laughs> and often super miss yep <laughs> like that like that poor what was her name Brittany that had that red that like that oh, red weave that they had to take, so take bad. out just, oh my god i remember actually watching that i remember seeing that episode live because i'd stopped watching it but i saw that episode and i was just like baby they hate you yeah yeah i remember that episode too i think i did watch that season okay i'm done giving enough like free <laughs> advertising for america's next top model because <laughs> they well, do just, not just, need it just, gate, just look, gatekeep it back to your patrons <laughs> who have earned their knowledge okay <laughs> that's true maybe this will be a patreon and if and if it's not then whew, you listeners are lucky you just got to hear us talk about america's next top model for that long <laughs> But it always starts because Tyra wanted to be a writer. See, relating it back to the book, because unlike Tyra, this person could actually write. It's very true. What an amazing segue back to the book. So I will take it and run with it. Jessica Hannon, <laughs> host of Deconstructing Damsels. <laughs> gotta make sure. Yay! Gotta make sure they know you. Um, so know today's me. book... <laughs> Today's book is Party Favors by Erin McLellan, and this contemporary female-female romance was published in December 2020. It's available on Amazon for free with Kindle Unlimited. Which otherwise, I, I want to say, yeah, exactly. And, and otherwise, I want to say it runs like $3.99, so still not yeah. bad. And, and it's a worthwhile investment of a book. Like, it's actually worth buying. Oh, yes, absolutely. And I will say, as somebody who has read the rest of this series, that this is one of my favorite series in contemporary romance today um party favors is the fourth book in aaron mcclellan's so over the holiday series um it's it's definitely a series where you can read each book as a standalone they do all have to do with some holiday in fact you might remember that we read stocking stuffers the very first book in the series for our 12 days of boobs miss holidays um back I, it wasn't this yeah, it wasn't this past season. It was the mm -hmm. season before. So it would have been the 2019 mm -hmm. Boobs Miss Merriment. But I, but I remember it because the name stuck out. Yeah. I mean, it's hard to forget a name like Stocking Stuffers. Although I kept I kept forgetting it and calling it Stuffing Her Stocking <laughs> on accident. <laughs> Although, to be fair, I heard it and said Santa Stuffers what? <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah, just That's a whole other book. Somebody... Somebody is getting stuffed in that book. 
<laughs> so, um, yeah, this is a great series. Um, had you, I, I think you mentioned this, but had you read any of the other books in the series before? This no, one? I've never read the author before. Okay. Okay, I, cool. I, like, I'm so new to reading contemporary. I'd never read the author before. Oh, good. Well, there you go. You are a newbie mm -hmm. in some way. So mm -hmm. perfect. And this is, um, I will say with Erin McLellan's books, I've, I haven't read her beyond this series, but I've read all four books in this series and they are all so body positive, sex positive. Yes. Oh my God. Like it is, it is so refreshing to read a series where, um, sexuality is fluid and there are toys and people are so open to exploring their bodies and sharing their bodies with other people. Like it is, mm -hmm. it really does remind me kind of, of like the millennial Gen Z POV on like, um, relationships today, which, you know, I mean, it's yeah. just, it's just a lot more open and fluid. Like there's not as much uh, definition to like, we are together in a relationship. Like it, it's very much embodies, modern relationships today so I will say if you are looking for a little bit of that in your reading this is a great series to check out and you can start with Party Favors which is a New Year's Eve book or you can you know take it back to Stocking Stuffers and start at the beginning so either way and you know like the the positivity reminded me a little bit of um Suleika Snyder mm. and her like I take a chance on me and her she's so lovely yes there, there there's a lot of that non-shaming for not being traditional and what's expected necessarily yeah like it's embraced instead of like you know kind of hidden away yeah and I think of um when I think of books where I'm looking for that as well I think of Rebecca Weatherspoon um and that yeah. most of her books I've read there are less traditional relationships you know I've read polyamorous threesome relationships in her books I've read um you know uh uh Zenny featuring two bisexual characters at the forefront so I mean it's it's definitely refreshing to see a lot more of that I want to see a lot more of it in mainstream romance let me tell you but yes. um I will settle I will settle for this right now right here so let me give everyone and, you know, it's not even really well it's oh, not even a settle really oh sorry you know it's not even a settle oh no it's not even settling it's like you're like you're um you're feeling happiness instead of settled you're like you're you're like okay this is a good compromise oh yeah for now no. this is a good this is a good step Yep. It's it's a good step. I want a leap now. I want people to read yep. this and say, yes, Superman. this more, please. <laughs> so Superman. no, that's a great way to, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, definitely not settling in that regards for sure. So let me give everyone the brief synopsis for Party Favors by Aaron McClellan. Three, Amanda Ellis knows three things. She's tired of doing what's expected of her. She hates her job at her family's business. And the last thing she wants to do is attend her parents' boring New Year's Eve ball with a date her mother picked. A few days of fun with her online best friend is exactly what she needs to ring in the new year on her own terms. Two, Ren Rebello. Oh, what a name. Is impulsive. I know, I, <laughs> I know. It's just Ren Rebello. It sounds like a fragrance. Like I want to buy Ren Rebello. <laughs> I was mad that like a bird lady was not on the, the <laughs> heaving bosoms at reading embrace this year because I was like, I have a bird lady right there. It's true. There it is. Ren. It's a cool name. It really is a cool name. So Ren Rebello is impulsive and always ready for fun. A last minute girls getaway sounds like the perfect way to spend New Year's. But even Ren isn't prepared for the spark of attraction she feels when she meets Amanda in person for the first time. Good thing Ren loves popping Amanda's cork. <laughs> See, what did I tell you? This is why we read the synopsis. It's for reasons like this. Because <laughs> if you read the book. <laughs> oh, Woo! gosh. One. After days, spending, or after days spent sharing end of year resolutions and the one bed in their cottage. Ooh, I see how they tied in one right there. Yeah. One bed. Uh -huh. The clock strikes midnight and the ball drops on their time together. Aw. As Amanda and Ren go their separate ways, they leave new resolutions unfulfilled. Is there enough New Year's magic left to turn their online friendship into real life love? 
Yes, there oh, totally yes. is. <laughs> so, yes. Okay, love it. Um, let's kick things off with "Party Favors" by Aaron McClellan, featuring Jessica Hannon from Deconstructing Dances. <laughs> Jessica Hannon. See, everyone is gonna know your name by the time this podcast is Thank through. They you. are no forgetting whatsoever. <laughs> Good, because I know so I'm gonna, I know to say my name is Jessica on my own podcast, and then I forget the rest. <laughs> there you go. See, people are going to be listening to this, and they'll have already been deconstructing damsels, <laughs> listeners, and they'll say, wait, her last name is Hannon? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, gosh. Okay, so as somebody who reads a lot more historical romance than contemporary romance, I am mm-hmm. eager to hear your thoughts, Jessica. So I'd love to know just overall impressions. What did you think of the book? I loved it. Like, I wasn't sure if I would because, like, anyone that listens to my podcast knows I tend to, like, um, again, heaving bosoms, herbs. I herb sex a lot. But I didn't (laughs) do that in this book. Because, like, I'm, I'm, like, one of the few people that I was just like, okay, first time. We're good. I'm done. And then I go on back to the – I like the foreplay more than the the actual consummation. Mm. Um, And so I'm like, all right. But, like, I really enjoyed this one because it felt like – it felt natural. Like yes. the the progression of their relationship may have been a bit fast at times, but I felt like it was tempered by the fact they had been friends for like five years online. So they knew a lot about each other intimately yeah. in different ways. So it kind of like, I think balanced that out a good bit. Yeah. And, and more, on, more to that, I really, I really appreciated, first of all, I mean, we're both part of a book and podcast community where the bulk of our friendships with people are online. I mean, it's, it felt yeah. very real in that, especially in 2020, 2021, this is how people are communicating. And so to take a friendship that has existed online for five years where they have shared about their dating lives and their family lives and their professional lives with each other. Um, one of the things I really loved is that when they do get together in person for the first time, they're so awkward. Like they don't know how to talk to each other in real life because they're not used to seeing somebody in front of them. So one of the first scenes that I loved was when they're actually, I think they're, I think they're in their cabin and they're like laying next to each other and they are messaging yeah. each other like on their phones <laughs> while that was laying that. next to each other. Yeah. I just thought that was so precious. <laughs> and like, and so natural. Yeah. Like my husband and I do that. <laughs> Actually, I have that note in my, in my, in my uh, thing. I was like, you know, th- I do that. Like, you know, we'll be sitting next to each other and we'll send each other stuff on Twitter all the time, even though we're like close enough that we can go look at each other's computer. Yeah. We're no more than like 10 steps from each other and I can see him when I'm on my phone. But we do it that way because it's like it's become natural because when you've been friends or lovers or, you know, anything in between, mm-hmm. you you share that intimacy through through messaging and through like written more than verbal sometimes because verbal is scary. Yeah. You you can't count on it. You don't know you can't it's read true. it so as easily as you can with the with the text because you know how they speak. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, but, and you know, you uh I mean most people I feel like in this day and age have have had some sort of online dating interaction. I won't say everybody, but I mean it's it's one of those things where, you know, anytime you meet up with somebody for the first time in real life, uh, it's, there's always going to be a little bit of awkwardness mm-hmm. just because it's, it's different. Like you're so used to seeing the words as opposed to hearing them. So I, mm-hmm. I loved that that felt so real. And at the same time, I like that they're, they're friends, like they're friends first, lovers second. And, yes. um, it just, Oh God, it just, it felt so natural. They have a great group of friends that join them on this, this little retreat for New Year's Eve. Um, all of which you will see featured in previous books of Aaron McClellan's So Over the Holiday series. Those are the people that you meet in this story. Um, and so that's something that if you do find yourself gravitating towards their friend group, know that there are more books about them (laughs) to go read. (laughs) That's one thing I like too, the fact that like Ren's friends were so accepting and were oh. not like off put because like, I mean, sometimes in romance you'll find where like one friend group will get jealous of the other friend group and you're like, why? Mm-hmm. Like you're, you're, you're friends with people in different ways. So why are you jealous? Like they're, they're not taking your place. But in this one, like Ren's fam, you know, family, I'm at this point, I'm calling on family. We're just like, yeah. okay, here. 
Yeah. Welcome Here, to our welcome point. to our world. Welcome to our lives. Please, please join us. Yeah, I mean like we're we're a little bit scandalous, we're a little bit of out of bounds and you know, maybe you need that. So please join in. I need that. I love them. I I mean, you you have Ren and yeah. Amanda who are meeting for the first time in person, but they've been friends for years and they strike up a relationship. You have the um, male male couple, one of which is a like bar owner, and then the other <laughs> one is a lingerie model. And I remember that mm-hmm. being a big a big conversation topic in their particular book was about the fact that he enjoyed wearing lingerie. So I loved that. And then you have the male female couple who are into going to orgies and you know having group mm-hmm. sex with people and I was just like oh my gosh this is fantastic this is the representation that I want to see like I I'm tired of seeing the sitcom with all the friends who men only date women and women only date men mm-hmm. and we are so hush hush about our lives and th- the most scandalous thing is somebody finding someone's vibrator I'm just like oh my god right? I'm done with that like these are the people that I want to see. These are the people that I want to be friends with. So I loved them. Yes. No, same. I adored it. I was like, because like, like I said, this is very outside of my usual reading. Like, I think this and I read like one more on my podcast that I'll be releasing in February that are more erotic, more than, you know, the standard that I usually read. And Mm -hmm. I was just like, I, I like the fact that in this one, it was more, it felt like it was more like friends doing actions together versus like insta love and some of the other, mm. you know, common tropes and yeah. the genre. It, it felt like it was like, okay, well, I've trusted you with all my secrets before. Right. So why am I going to run from this now? Right. And I love that. Yeah. Because I think that that's. That's, that's missing sometimes in romance, the friendship. That's why, like, I highlight it every time I see it in a book I read on the podcast or in a review or whatever. I'm like, no, this really works because they're friends. You see, like, th- this this is a good thing. Like, you know, this is – the intimacy level is higher for them because of that. Oh, for sure. And that makes me cheer way harder for someone when I can trust them to be the right match for each other. And they were a great match. They were very mm-hmm. much the yin and the yang. Like, I mean, what's great about – you know, you have Amanda who, first of all, she's the disco ball heiress, which I just yes. could not stop <laughs> laughing about. That her family is renowned for creating disco balls. And so she has her money from being a disco ball heiress and absolutely hates it. But she's very interested in um, vintage fashion. She wants to open up a clothing store. I was like, that's dope. She also is bisexual, but actually hasn't come out to anybody except for Ren. Um, And actually, there's a very sweet scene where she says to Ren, she's like, can I come out to you here and now? And Ren's like, well, I already know you're bisexual. Like, we've talked about this. And she said, yeah, but I've never actually said the words out loud to anybody. And it's such a small piece of the book, but I really appreciated the fact that that was there. It was nice to see them kind of like... How to be, like, you know, conscious of it. And Rim was like, okay, I get it. Like, Mm -hmm. this is what you need for your your movement and for your ability to kind of untether from your family a little bit. You need to be able to say this aloud. Yeah. And I think think that's really important. I I just – I really enjoyed the fact that, like, they they knew what they were – they knew what they were doing when they talked to each other because they'd already done it. Like the, like, you know, new year's resolutions and like new old, you you know, year resolution stuff. I, I liked that because it showed um not only their friendship, but also their, their awareness of each other. Like yeah. beyond, beyond the, the sex and the friendship, there's that other level of almost partnership that comes with it as well. That was actually a really cute idea too like the whole um and I do want to talk about Ren but I love that you brought up the new old year resolutions because I thought that was such a clever idea on behalf of Aaron McClellan that you know they're they're staying at this this cabin retreat like on the days leading up to New Year's and Ren I think is the one who comes up with the Mm -hmm. idea of new old year resolutions what is there something that you wish you had accomplished in the past year, but you didn't, but it's also something that we could actually make happen for you in the next, you know, day or so, something that's more immediate. And I thought that was such a clever idea 
And I think that's how we should approach a lot more resolutions. <laughs> I do too, because it takes the pressure off, right? Because it's like, yeah. okay, you don't have to have a house by the time you're 40. Like, okay, your new year resolution is you'd like to own an entire set of your favorite book in hardback. Doable. Like, you can do that through the year. And it's not going yeah. to cost you as much as a house. That's true. <laughs> like, I, smart nice. goals, people. Come on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But it's realistic. But it's a, it's a way of being happy with your resolutions instead of feeling all the the um, pressure to be perfect, which is what Amanda feels a lot. And I get it. I was a fan. I really did like that. And then the streaking, <gasps> the streaking. Yes. When they go streaking through the snow, like, I mean, it's okay. Oh. I'll be honest. Um, I, when I lived in Chicago, I did the polar bear plunge, which oh, wow. is, you know, but not naked. I mean, you know, you're in a bathing suit yeah. and I think I even wore a sweatshirt when I did it, but um, you know, you, you go into the Lake Michigan in January um, I've yeah. also done the no pants subway ride. Um, <laughs> I've also done the naked run in Santa Cruz, California. I basically love excuses to be nude. So like, <laughs> um, I was a fan of the, of the streaking in the snow and I live in Minnesota now. So I feel like that could potentially be a possibility for me yeah. this year. Yeah, absolutely. Cause like you have to wait for the, the snow <laughs> to get more than, you know, two inches more like three feet. <laughs> it's true we'll see we'll see it's uh it's still early in the year but you know what february is coming and uh that february could mean march. more snow who knows <laughs> february and march is always bad even in the south when i was living in atlanta that's when we'd get our mm. snow a lot like late late january yeah. february march that, like every time we've shut down it's always been in like january or march so yeah it's true it, it, even on the west coast that's the rainy rainy season so yeah, I don't know. I'm sensing perhaps a nude run in the future, but I I don't know. It's neither here nor there. But um, it is it is very fun in this book, and Ren in general is like who I aspire to be. Like Ren is just first of all, she's a the way we uh, describe her on like one of the very first pages is a badass lingerie designer, confident, open, and funny, and yes. that told me everything that I needed to know about Ren. I was like, that's it. I'm sold. That's, that's yeah. all. That's all I needed to know. And and it was like very clear that she wanted her friends to be involved, like in, in celebration yeah. and also in like ringing in the new year and starting afresh every year. Like just because it's over doesn't mean like you have to give everything up. You can just look forward to the mm -hmm. next, the next like climb that you're going to do or the next, like, you know, whatever you're going to do, like, you know, what Amanda does in that year is huge, you know, like that, that new year yes. is a whole new thing. And so I think it's important. It is important. And, and it's a great example too. I love that you brought that up of, um, you know, when you start a new year, you don't have to necessarily change every single thing about yourself and what you do. Like Ren is somebody who is so comfortable in who she is. She has a great job. She designs lingerie. She knows what she loves. She knows what she doesn't love. And her arc was something that I found really interesting because it, it is a novella. So it's definitely a shorter book. There's not a lot of opportunity for character growth, but for Ren, her, her arc is that, you know, she's kind of tired of being labeled as like the person that you just go to have fun with. Like, party oh, favor. yeah, exactly. Our relationship was fun. Like this was fun while it lasted. Oh my gosh, Ren, you're so fun. And I was like, that's, that's an interesting arc you don't normally see, especially for female characters yeah. in romance novels. Like, I feel like we get sort of the, the fuck boy or the rake for male characters a lot, but yeah. For Ren, it was it was different, and I did really like that. No, I did too, and I, I like the fact that, like, by the end, she was able to fully accept herself with that. Like, it's mm -hmm. okay to be labeled fun. It's not necessarily a dismissal. Sometimes fun is what people need, and in return, they can give you what you need. It's a balance of give and take. It's okay to be the fun person without having to think everyone is going to leave because not everyone will because she's got a, a found family that stands beside her all the time because she's mm. fun because she helps yeah. them and they help her in return um I'm gonna read you a small highlight that I have which is something that Ren says that I think basically sums up her character and who she wants to be which I oh my gosh I would get this on like a freaking t-shirt so Aaron McLellan if you make them please <laughs> let me know because I want this. So 
it, it starts here. Ren smiled. I don't want a run-of-the-mill life. I like going to barbecues that turn into orgies. I like getting rowdy with the roller derby team after practice. I like playing spin the bottle and going on last-minute vacations. I like smoking pot and skinny dipping and experiencing what life has to offer. But that doesn't mean I wouldn't be the best fucking wife in the world. Yep. Oh, I love her. I love her so much. I, and it's, oh, it's just perfect. She's like, she was such an amazing character. And you know me, like I'm, I mean, the whole point of Drinking Trashing Damsels is because women rock and romance. And so mm-hmm. I, I liked the fact that I felt like she was actually the stronger of the two, Amanda, when it came uh, yes. on the arc. I think she had the better arc. Um, I think, I think Ren kind of went out on that one, just from my perspective of watching her kind of um, let go. Um, mm-hmm. Instead of like building up, she was letting go. And that's a good point. Yeah, I, I think it was a really interesting because like Amanda was just coming to terms, whereas Ren was like putting a finality of, OK, this is who I am. Let me solidify who I am now. And that's actually a, a more of a challenge to write. I think like Amanda has, I think, a more clear arc in terms of she has all these opportunities for growth. Like she is ba- she's not, she's not really out. Um, I mean, she's out to Ren and Ren's friends, but her family doesn't really recognize you know, her sexuality. They're always trying to set her up with these men that she's not interested in. They don't care about what she wants with her job. There's so much room for her to grow in this story. And we see it and we see it in the epilogue when it's a year later. And she has accomplished a lot of the things that she did want to accomplish while being in a relationship with Ren. Mm -hmm. Um, And so to take Ren, who has already done all of that. She's already come out. She knows who she is and what her sexuality is. She has a job she loves. She has friends she loves. She lives in the city she loves. For her to have this arc that, you know, Jessica Hannon from Deconstructed Damsels, <laughs> Jessica Hannon, says is, like, the more prominent arc. I mean, that just goes to show you, like, how much thought was really put into her character arc. Yeah. And, it like, I think it was... I, like um when they went to the like MLM thing <laughs> when they went to that oh my yeah. god I died <laughs> but, looking, but I could see why she was doing it like I can like I literally followed Ren's thought on that because she's like okay this will be fun this will be different it's here where we are and it's free so why wouldn't we go do it and you know yes. that, that reminded me a lot of like the like the the 90s like in the 90s tv shows you saw that a lot a lot more willingness mm-hmm. to be adventurous without being like outrageous but like you would see you know you would see in all these sitcoms of people going and doing that kind of stuff and enjoying it and and like laughing about it and just learning something from it and like you know it ended up like propelling amanda but it also helped propel Ren, and so it, it I really agree. worked on that and so i thought those kind of like moments are really great and like you know when you know that douchebag <laughs> goes up and starts bothering amanda <laughs> again after she's already very clearly set him down because wow that was an amazing set down i even have it highlighted but even while she did that <laughs> Like, she still came up behind Amanda and was back up without being, you know, domineering or dominant or trying to prove anything. She's just like, my girl can handle it. This is not a problem. Just, right. You know, like, okay, I got your back. If you need me, pull me in. And and that's yeah. what Amanda did. She was like, okay, cool. We're on the same wavelength on this. Yeah, tap in now. But, mm-hmm. um, yeah, no, I actually – I, <laughs> I want to go back to the MLM scene because that <laughs> – that was, I think, a great example of, and we talked about this in our in our bonus excerpt for Patreon. We were uh, Jessica Hannon from Deconstructing <laughs> Damsels. Jessica Hannon and I were talking about how uh, we kind of get tired of seeing. There's a there's a there's a line that you can cross between having a character that's endearing and having them become like a caricature or like a parody. And what I loved about the scene where you know, it's um, it's the three of them and they sneak into a what what they're questioning is if it's going to be a business seminar, a MLM or a cult <laughs> or a timeshare um, <laughs> for those. Yeah, or a timeshare that's happening at this this hotel that they're staying at. And they're like, well, let's just go in and see what happens. And I feel like in another book, it could have easily just been a joke. It could have been just like, let's make fun of this. Ha ha ha. 
But what I loved about that scene was that there actually was something to take away from that scene. They, you know, it, it does end up being basically like a cult, but, um, or no, it's a mid-level, whatever. Yeah. It's like a mid-level marketing cult. It's, and, it's, like, uh, it's like power, it's like power, <laughs> like power powder or something for people that are doing like exercises or whatever. And like the it's exercise so has stupid. nothing to do, like their exercise has yeah. nothing to do with the product, <laughs> which made me think of all those like, you know, self-help gurus from like the 90s. Oh yeah, all of them. All of them. But what I love about it is that he actually, the guy who's leading the seminar, has them write down their their goals and their resolutions and what they do want for a new year. And, you know, um, their friend Benji is just kind of like blowing it off and making a grocery list. And um, at the same time, both Amanda and Ren are actually writing down their goals and Amanda, you know, very clearly says, I don't want to throw mine away or I think they're instructed to tear it up, you know, and just let it go into the atmosphere. And she says, no, I want to keep this. Like, this is a genuine list I'm making for myself. And Ren makes a list for herself as well. And so I really did love that scene because it is funny. I mean, they're, you know, at the forefront, it is like a mid-level marketing scheme, which is hilarious, let's be honest. But also that there is something to take away from that and that they each have something, multiple somethings that they want for both themselves and their future with somebody else, which I really did, except for Benji, who just wants to make a shopping list. And I... (laughs) respect that as well <laughs> I would to be fair I probably would have done the same thing I'd been like oh crap I gotta write down all yeah. this stuff because I I Must write the go list to out. post office <laughs> well I write the list out and my husband goes and gets it so I have to make sure I have everything so because he works there you go he works in the morning so he can go before the whole crush of people come and he works in grocery anyway so he can just go get them and then come home and yep. it's like 10 30 and all our shopping is done for the day yep there you go. <laughs> I'm like, Benji and I, man, we're on the same wavelength on that. <laughs> yeah. Like, like, Got to use your time wisely, uh, yeah. you know? <laughs> it's like, I forgot the milk. I forgot the butter. How am I going to make a cheese sauce without those two items? I have the cheese, but nothing to go with it. Well, that doesn't sound like a problem. I mean, cheese goes with your mouth. So well, yeah. that's that's all you really need to know. But if, but if you're making pasta, you want to make a cheese sauce to go with it. So it can be stringy and gooey and go, wee. And go wee. That's what I'm looking for for my pastas, by the way, is cheese sauce to go wee. Well, shouldn't it, I mean, shouldn't it like go like, you know, like three feet in the air with all the like, you know, mozzarella that comes like spiraling down and stuff? Yep. Like, it should go wee. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. Jessica Hannon, host of Deconstructing <laughs> Damsels. What else did you like about this book? I One thing I really liked is I mentioned it earlier, but I really liked Amanda's set down. To that, like, creepy... Yeah. That creepy guy who was, like, you know, trying to... So, like, the the world a little bit, like, the the log cabin aspect of it kind of felt a little bit like some of the Canadian, like, Hallmark movies. But... Um, or their version of Hallmark movies. But it also <laughs> felt a little bit like... For some reason, I kept seeing a little bit of New Heart, and I don't know why. Because I guess I'm old. But, okay. Because, like, I could see, like, the bed and breakfast part of it, you know? And then, like, this guy felt like one of those guys that was on, like, the, the, the new heart. Like, one of those, like, slimy guys that, you know, trying to, like, mm-hmm. hit on the girls. And the girls are just, like, woof. And so, <laughs> like, not. Nah. It's a bad woof. Not a good woof. <laughs> yeah, no. It was a bad woof. It was a very bad woof. Um, and so, but, there, you know, when he's, like, trying to do things, like, he's, like, um. We partner with Father Time Farm and Resort to throw the New Year's Eve party here. It's the event of the year. Let me buy you a drink and I'll tell you about it. The tickets are hard to come by, but I have an in. He said with a wink, she hated winkers. And I was like, ugh, I don't blame you. And then, like, right? he, he continues going on doing that. And he's like, ah, she's like, you're out of luck then. She pointed at herself. Nothing natural about me because he's talking about how he likes natural girls. And he's like, she's like, fake hair, fake makeup, fake tits, fake tan. I like the way I look. You're terrible at negging. Zero out of ten. And I was like, hot dang, that's something Preach. I would say. That was something Preach. I would oh, yeah. say. I love I love the way that she owns the fact that she has, like, fake tits. I was just like, oh, my god like she I think she says something about it to Ren at some point too where Ren says like oh my god you have amazing breasts and she's like yeah they're fake like aren't they amazing and I'm like yes like there is nothing and I mean we talked about this in our in our Patreon excerpt as well that we were talking about how we wanted to see more representation for fat bodies in romance and beyond but also you know when we think about the phrase like body positivity 
there's there's a lot wrong with it in just that a lot of the time we're talking specifically about like what we want our right. bodies to look like and there's so much negativity surrounding like super super twiggy women or women with giant breasts or women with huge hips or you know you're I mean there's no perfect body and so it's just amazing to me that um people like get shit on for like you know having plastic surgery or like you know changing things about their body that they want to look better it's like it's your body you should be able to do whatever the fuck you want for your body right and it's like and also to that like not everybody is going to be like Pam Anderson like like that's that's the standard right like but I mean like or like um what's her name I can't remember her name anyway she was on um Charles in Charge anyway her Nicole Eggert yeah um, you know, like the like the Baywatch again. I mentioned Alice mm-hmm. Pragler mm-hmm. Pragler a while ago, and she does a lot of like Baywatching episodes, and she covers them, and I Got love it. it. Kate, Baywatch and Baywatch Nights, by the way, and so <laughs> so you can imagine. Wow. Yeah, so I see them a lot because <laughs> they come up fairly often, and um, my husband loves her, so I've just kind of like begun to love her too. And you know, she's you see like the same look and the same the same idea, but it was like you know people make fun of them now but like in the 1990s like that was a standard like i mean there's a mm-hmm. reason why you had like anna nicole you had like pam anderson and like there was nothing wrong with it like okay so yeah. they had fake boobs fake butt whatever like who cares they, they, they weren't hurting anybody like they weren't like culturally culturally appropriating anything they were getting fake tits and if you're talking about them, like if you're having a conversation about, oh my God, did you see Anna Nicole? Oh God, RIP Anna Nicole. But did, right. did you see Anna Nicole's tits? Like they're huge. Like you're doing exactly what she wants you to do. You're talking about her tits. Like there's mm-hmm. a reason, you know, she got them so big. And I know this because I used to watch the Anna Nicole Smith show because it was a gem. <laughs> I like so, her. I like, she was oh, like. She was fighting her. She was smart. I liked her. Like she was smart in her business. She was just fighting in other areas. Yep, yep. She was she was a treasure and I'm so 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 what a crazy story too. Her her story and like Brittany Murphy's story are like two yeah. that are just like really wild Hollywood stories if you ever decide to take a deep dive into like podcasts or documentaries or anything about them they are very interesting and I think that it says a lot too because like you know I mentioned people that were from the 90s because like we don't really talk about it now the same way we did back then it's just become standard now like it's okay to look like you got surgery basically like you know back in the 90s if you look like you had surgery well they knew what kind of girl you were and in this Mm. one like and in this book, Amanda's like, I don't care. First of all, I have more money than, than you do, so I could probably buy you, so that's not a problem. Um, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, and she doesn't throw it around, but she, she's aware of her privilege in that way. And as yeah. you, you see when she deal, when she has that deal with her parents, she's aware of, of the opportunities that it brings her, and so she doesn't care. She's happy with who she is, and that's all that matters. And that's how it should be, whether it's you know the fact that you want to get bigger boobs or – a different nose or, you know, you're perfectly happy with the bo- body that you have. Like there's, you know, whatever, it's your body. So you're the only one that gets to make decisions about that. So yeah, I did. I mean, again, it's not like a major point in the book, but I do love that. She's just like, eh, I got a fake tan. I got fake boobs. Like, um, if you like it, great. Um, I like it too. That's why, uh, you know, I did it. <laughs> exactly. And, but I think it matches a lot with Ren too, because like, I, I sometimes wonder if maybe that was an, off you know off screen but I wonder if some of that influence was because of Ren as well because Ren was so confident in herself yeah at least at least outwardly she was so confident I wonder if that helped Amanda be more confident about herself because it seems like Ren has been helping Amanda with her timidness and her you know Mm -hmm. inability to like say what she wants yeah I think so because I mean by the end we do see like Amanda initiating like more, you know the sex between them or mm-hmm. like you know wanting to try new things it, it's less of Ren taking the lead and more of Amanda do it because Ren definitely like takes the lead um as far as like their sexual exploration goes like throughout the book until Based closer to the end yeah. I mean like yeah exactly it's all new for Amanda so she won't know what to mm-hmm. do you need someone yeah because they're both bit. They're both, like, out bisexuals, but Amanda, this is her first experience with a woman. And so, um, you know, she's just as nervous as she is excited about it. But 
Um, yeah. And then we talk about Ren, who, you know, her last relationship she had was with a married couple who moved mm-hmm. away. So, I mean, clearly she's got a lot of different experiences that Amanda hasn't even had the opportunity to have. So, um, ooh, I mean, I think that's the perfect segue into talking about the sexcapades in this <laughs> book. So, um, I will say these books are hot, oh, capital yeah. H. Thank you, Erin McClellan. I love it. And um, I love that they feature a lot of toys. I'm yes. always a fan of representation of toys in the bedroom even or the it, boardroom. <laughs> even, yeah. Even if it's, you know, green dick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Was that your favorite? Did you like the green dick? <laughs> no, I, I love the green dick just because it reminded me of Bad Dragon and like how popular that kind of, that, that kind of like... <laughs> <laughs> always was about like i, I don't think know, five years ago to, like so. shrek stick too don't they she's like oh and she pulled out this dildo that looks like it could have been shrek stick <laughs> yes i was like you know what <laughs> if you can take that i'm champ to you yeah i was like i don't know if i could but <laughs> oh oh you man go <laughs> oh god no. yeah, it's so good My- did you have a favorite scene that you wanted to talk about Yes, I loved the the Jill off scene in the bathroom. I did too. Actually, I'm looking through my highlights and that was the first, that was one of the first things that I did highlight. One of my first highlights was actually then when they were like, um, dirty talk to get her to that point. Because like, there was a whole lot of like, Ren pushing boundaries when it came to Amanda mm-hmm. and, and them getting like, really like, hot for each other and not really knowing what to do with it either. Right, because it's like you've yeah. been friends for you've been best friends for five years, but how do you transition from friends to lovers and without losing that intimacy that comes with friendship? Right, because if you break yep. up or if you guys aren't a good fit, you're sol. Like there, there's no line of vision for you. Like so, you lose yeah. something, and in, in but like it was hot to me. <laughs> like I told <laughs> you, I love foreplay. Like if if you can give me really good foreplay, I will read the sex scene. If you do oh, not yeah. give me good foreplay, I am not interested in your sex scene. That it's just mm-hmm. the way I am. Like it's so true. Like, and I think that comes from like me growing up and watching things like Moonlighting and you know enjoying you know books uh, like you know classic lit like uh, Much Ado About Nothing and you know all oh, those. Also, the verbal foreplay. Yeah, like the the verbal foreplay really gets me. Like, yeah, it's totally good. Like. You know, it's it's something I've learned as I've gotten older, too, because, like, I was a late bloomer when it came to sex. I didn't start having sex till my little, I guess I was, like, my mid to late 20s. So I was, like, a little bit, I was having to let go of things. And so I finally came to it. And I was, like, I didn't know what I liked. And then, like, mm-hmm. I will say, like, being with my husband has helped a lot because, you know, we we try things and we do things that I wouldn't necessarily say, you know, normally. And it's not on my podcast, so I can say it. Um, <laughs> but he's not editing, so it won't matter. I found that like the verbal foreplay really helped because we were long distance for so long. We were long distance for seven years almost. Wow. Yeah, and so and it's like international long distance. Like we couldn't just hop on a plane and go see each other like right. once or twice a year. Like we saw each other like twice before I moved over here, and he was here for three. He was at home for three weeks and then for two months. So like for me, the verbal is so key to really like falling into the story and and the the romance and the erotic tinge to it right so yeah for me, that, that was like a really big scene for me because you could see how they were reacting and you could see them reacting to each other without necessarily wanting to admit it but also wanting yeah. to admit it at the same time there's that that push pull of do we want to ruin this friendship or and have really, 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 really good sex? Or yeah. do we want to maintain the friendship and have no sex? And have sexual tension. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, I mean, it gets to the point where, you know, they clearly want to make something happen so badly, but are also fighting the, you know, like, like you said, the push pull of like, will this ruin our friendship that Amanda, you know, just goes into the bathroom and takes care of herself. And Ren knows exactly that it's happening while uh-huh. it's happening. <laughs> oh, yeah. And like, and I, I can see it happening. You know what I mean? Like, it doesn't matter if you're like two female friends, male, male, opposite sex, gender queer. It doesn't matter. Like, you can just see it happening because it felt real. Because, like, sometimes you hit that that point where, like, oh, 
I'm really into my best friend and I, I have a problem with this because I think we could have amazing sex. But I don't want to ruin the friendship. Which is why she fell in the pool when they when, <laughs> when she first arrived. <laughs> Amanda, Amanda miscalculated that one. Grand entrance. I love it. Did you have a specific excerpt or yes. <laughs> excerpt that you wanted to read? Okay. I don't read sex excerpts very often, so bear with me, folks. <laughs> okay. So the embarrassment should have been a dose of cold water, but it didn't even touch the heat spreading through her. She reached the bathroom, shut and locked the door, and ripped down her shorts and panties. Luckily, she had the foresight to turn the water in the sink up to full blast, because in the moment she touched her clit, a low moan escaped her throat. She was wet and warm, blood warm, her heartbeat throbbing in her pussy. Fuck, it wouldn't take much, and it wouldn't take long. She planted a hand on the sink, spread her legs, and peered herself in the mirror. Her hair was messy, spilling over her shoulders and down her back. Her eyes were bright, her cheeks red. Leaning over like this, she could see the top of her breast through the loose neck of her sleep shirt. Her pink nipples tinted the silk. This was reckless and wild and undoubtedly a mistake, but there was nothing going to stop her. Mm, damn, mm-hmm. girl. Right? <laughs> Verbal foreplay. It's I'm true. You. She gets so turned on. She goes to the bathroom to take. It's funny. I was actually just rewatching. Um, I I don't know what prompted it, but I went back and started rewatching Girls, and I remember that one of the one of the very first episodes of Girls, Marnie is like talking to this smarmy artist who sucks ass, but she's really into him, <laughs> and she uh and then she like is at a work function and goes into the bathroom and just like jills herself off you know because she's like oh my god that was so hot like I have to take care of this now and I had just finished reading the book at the time and I was like oh my god this is perfect timing (laughs) see I'm saying my scene happens a little bit later in the book I, I don't remember if this is the first time that they have sex or if this is maybe after it but this is where um, you can tell that this is Amanda's first time with a woman because a lot of it is her asking for like instruction and, you know, making sure that what she's doing is making Ren feel good. And what I love about Ren is that she's so vocal, like mm-hmm. not just in the bedroom, but she she says like up front, like, oh, this is great. Like, I'm happy to, you know, go down on you, finger you. But like, also, I need to get a vibrator for myself because I need some sort of stimulation. So I love that she's so open about like what she wants and needs. So yes. this is where um, Amanda is getting down with Ren and it starts here. Amanda slipped two fingers inside her slowly. The heat was incredible. Ren's pussy contracted around her digits as Amanda stroked Ren's G spot. Am I doing okay? Amanda asked. Yeah. Ren threaded her fingers into Amanda's hair, loosening the messy bun, causing her hair to come free and skim over Ren's thighs. It shouldn't be so hot that you've never done this before, but it is. You're doing so awesome. Amanda smiled and suckled Ren's clit, happy that Ren was enjoying it. Ren's legs trembled around Amanda's ears. Harder, Ren gasped out. Which, Amanda said, not sure if Ren wanted Amanda to fuck her harder or suck harder. (laughs) Both. It took Amanda a minute to figure out how to coordinate her mouth and hand in the most effective way. But once she got it, Ren cried out. (laughs) And I could go on and on because it's a great scene and she, you know, pulls out the vibrator at one point. But I just like, oh, I love this because I... I said this in one of our Boobsmiths episodes last year where I was like, I want to see more awkward, messy bedroom encounters. Like, I want to see people falter. Yeah, I just, I'm like, I think it's the journey to get there that's, like, so sexy. Like, the more you talk, the more you mess up something, but you're corrected on it, and then you work on it together. Like, I love seeing messy romance, especially messy bedroom romance. So I... This this ticked all my boxes, and it's a great way to start the year. <laughs> and it's relatable. Like, I mean, like, yes. when you have sex, it's not going to be perfect the first time. Like, <laughs> God bless. It's not going like, to be perfect the tenth time. Let's right. be honest. <laughs> but like, but especially like the first time you're doing something, it's not going to be perfect. Like, I was reading a book the other day for the um, readathon, and you know, like, it was very short sex, but there was like no foreplay. I was like, Ugh. how is a virgin going to have sex without foreplay? 
Come nah. <laughs> <Right>? Pass. <laughs> exactly. Like, you know, like you, you need that, you need that feeling of comfort and feeling of, okay, this doesn't work, but, but this will, you know what I mean? Like, it's not going to be perfect, yeah. you know? It's kind of like when you read the books and you hear, like, when you when you keep reading, like, the men where it hurts the woman to go in. I was like, not if you do it right. Stop yeah, it's wrong. like reading reading an anal sex scene where there's no lube involved. Yeah. I'm just like, that's it. I'm clenched up now. Thanks a lot for that. <laughs> Thanks a lot. I have no interest in the rest of your book because no. <laughs> yeah, seriously, it's enough to turn me off from reading the rest of the book. Yeah. So I I am very thankful that this book was so open when it came to what feels good for everybody, people being vocal about what they want and what they need. Like, I need a vibrator to come. I need you to do this. I need, I'm just like, this is great. I love people talking about things and I don't know where it happened when people thought that that wasn't sexy because people talking about what they want is such a turn on. So I want more of it, please. Yes, because it, be- it shows that there's a trust, there's an innate trust between the characters to be yes. open and vocal and honest in what they need in that moment when they're at one of their most vulnerable times. Mm-hmm. Ren and Amanda are openly verbalizing what they like and don't like, and like Amanda is learning what she likes and doesn't like in this in this new reality because it's one thing to say that you're bi, it's another thing to act upon it, right? Because yeah. my husband is bisexual, but he's never had sex with a man, but he is bisexual. Mm-hmm. And I mean, he's not going to have one because we're together and I'm very like mine, um, but, <laughs> but like, you know, but he's okay with it because he's had experiences doing other things with men that are, you know, mostly online and stuff. But, and that doesn't mean that he automatically is straight because he married a woman. Like, exactly. That's, like my I husband think... is bisexual and I, I've, I've been saying this since like we got together. I'm like, yes, my fiance is bisexual. My husband is bisexual. Like I, I know. I know. It doesn't mean he's going to be something <laughs> else either. Like, you know, but it's like, but it, but it, it's a different experience. He knows what works for him yes. because he has experienced it with himself. And I, I can see where like Amanda needed that, that, and having Ren there, mm-hmm. someone she trusts like without thought and without, you know, even like a hint of hesitation means a lot. Oh yeah. Ren would be like the ideal person to have like a first sexual experience with. Like yeah. I, she, she is just very much like she's she's giving she wants she will tell you exactly what she wants she wants to find out what makes you tick but she's also not going to make assumptions like so i i was a big fan of of their relationship in general but also i was like oh i love that i love that amanda's first time is with ren because yeah. ren is the person that anybody should aspire to have their first time with Let's give this book a few grades, and we are going to be grading for heart, humor, and heat on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the very best that it could be. So let us first start with heart. What do you think? I think I'd probably give it about mm, an 8.5 okay. out of 10. And that's only because I think that some parts seemed a little bit rushed, and I felt like okay. it should have, you know, like there was there were steps that I needed to, to hear, like, um, like the last, like, mm, epilogue. Like, I felt like some things felt a little bit rushed, a little bit quick. Sure, sure. But I felt like, I mean, I felt like it was there. I just wanted a little bit more, like, maybe, like, three more pages or four more pages to kind of, like. It's the nature of the novella, I feel like, too. Yeah. That's yeah, true. I'm with you. I gave it, I gave it a nine Um, because, for me, I, I, I think there's great heart between the two of them, mm-hmm. like, starting as friends, becoming lovers, and then also, I love the heart that exists within their found family. Yeah. I just find it so precious and so oh, yeah. supportive. And I wish I wish we had more of that in in everything, not just in romance, in books, in movies, in TV shows. I loved it. Found family is so important. It's one of my favorite tropes in, in the mm. genre, especially. Because yes. found family is everything. Like that's why um, you know, in Tessa Dare, her latest like series with the four women. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the governor's game, the wallflower wager, the bride bet that's not out yet, and the duchess deal. Like, and though in those, the one thing I like is the fact that the women are close. Like, yeah, like the, you know what I mean. Like you feel it, but I like I wish there was more of one where you could find like more um, groups of friends that are not like put apart by gender. Like like the guys are friends and the girls are friends, but why can't the guys and yes. the girls be friends? 
That's actually, it's so funny you brought that up. There was one book that um, I read. Uh, I want to say it was 2020, though, at this point. I, I mean, it feels so long ago. But um, Martha Waters, To Have and to Hoax. I um, I feel like if you haven't read it, you would probably enjoy it because it is a historical romance read. But it also reads very much like a 90s sitcom. And Martha, from our interview together, that was very purposeful. She's a huge friend of the, she's a huge fan of, of the show friends and it's it's a story with three women three men it's very much a historical romance sitcom and so what I liked about that one though was that there were some scenes not a ton but there were some where it did feature some of the women with some of the men and not the men that were courting them like it was it was a friendship and I that was something I remember mentioning during our episode review of to have and to hoax was that I was, I was surprised. Like, I don't see enough of that and no. especially not in historical romance. So no. I, I'm with you. I want to see more, more friendships regardless of the, uh, genders. There's literally no excuse for a contemporary not to have those kind of friendships because we all right. have them, like whether they're online or offline or whatever, like it's yep. found families are not just like split off by gender like majority of my friends are are you know women but i do have male friends that i trust to give me honest answers and stuff too so it's not like it's yeah i'm not the only one out there like that no no and this book has that in spades so that's definitely why my heart rating is so high for it as well is because of the heart that exists with their found family. So, okay, how about humor? How funny was it for you? I think I gave it around an eight again. Um, yeah, I gave it an eight too. It was funny, and, like, it was funny, like, especially, like, with a Shrek dick and stuff like that. Um, that's always funny. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when you, when, when you have a Shrek dick that you're, you know, writing – but um right you can't really go wrong with that and like the 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 scenes where like you know amanda put you know people down that were trying to put her down and such and you know the nagging stuff but like i felt like it it didn't necessarily use the new year's theme a little bit in that way because there was a lot more chances they could have used more humor like there could have been like Mm. like in the costume changes and stuff like that they could have been like a little bit more humorous with it i think okay Okay. Yeah. And honestly, I mean, I, I kept forgetting that it was like a new year's like themed book, like, and which I don't think is like a bad thing, but, um, I, it's very much like even during, you know, the 12 days of boobs miss, we do a bunch of holiday reads Mm -hmm. and I've used the distinction before of this is very much a book that takes place at the holidays as opposed to this being a holiday book. Right. And that's kind of how I felt about this book was I was like, yes, you know, it's meant for our January theme of cheers because there's a lot of celebration going on. It is a New Year's Eve, New Year's Day, you know, romance. However, this could very easily have taken place on like a random Tuesday as well. So, right. um, it could you know, like a 40th I, I, birthday party type thing, you know what I mean? Exactly. Exactly. So, I mean, I, I think just the idea of New Year's plays in because it's about new beginnings and, mm-hmm making choices that, you know, uh, are are something that maybe you hadn't thought about starting fresh, like starting the new year off in a different way, being who you want to be your most authentic self. So I think that's how new year's plays into it, but you're right. It's, it's fun. It's funny. I, for one, um, I highlighted a bunch of the terrible pickup lines that Ren and Amanda would share with each other from like their, their various like Tinder oh, God, dates yeah, or beginning. whatever. Yeah. Oh my gosh. There were, yeah, there were some great ones. Like my favorite was if your left leg is Thanksgiving and your right leg is Christmas, can I visit between the holidays? Mm-hmm. And I just, I just about died when I read that one. And so, um, there's, there's a lot of comedic moments, especially in the dialogue. Um, but you're right. I mean, like overall it's, it's not like a, I, I wasn't laughing my ass off like right. the whole time. It wasn't like an I Love Lucy episode. No. And honestly, I this I would much prefer this yeah. oh, so and the comedy in yeah. this than I would yeah. the I Love Lucy, you know, but ridiculous was, hilarity. Right. But it wasn't intended to be that. Yeah. But even so, it's still a very comedic book. So, I mean, oh. if you're looking for a positive, fun happy. book to start off 2021, yeah, very happy. I'm um, not yeah. – not too angsty. Um, this is this is definitely a great place 
to start with that. So now that you've heard some of our, our sex herbs from the book, let's <laughs> talk about heat. What do you think? Honestly, like if you want to, I would probably give it somewhere around a nine because there was a lot of, sex. okay. There was a lot of sex and a lot of really good sex. Yeah. There was one, the, like the scene, <laughs> the scene in the hot tub. I was like, cool. And then mm. they went back into the hot tub and they were not having sex. <laughs> and I was like, is that sanitary? <laughs> <laughs> You know what? You know what killed me was like they kept talking about their friends who have orgies yeah. and then they went up to use that friend's room so that they could have sex on the balcony. And I was just like, wait a second. I'm sorry. You've talked about how these people have orgies. You've talked about how you're going to their bedroom and you're telling me I'm not going to get an orgy group sex scene. Yes, I am I was so expecting pissed. It. That's the only reason I didn't give this I was- book a 10 was that... <laughs> I was I was not expecting like the whole hand up inside her hoo ha, but no, no. Although I will say, um, again, that's a flashback to oh, I want to say it Zenny, but maybe it was a different read. No, I think it was Zenny where there was a fisting scene. Yeah. So this was actually like my second fisting no, romance no, no, no. novel. I wasn't worried about the fisting. I was just like, but she's only been having sex with with women for like three days. <laughs> I was like, her, poor, yeah, her just, poor pussy was probably hurting so badly. No time to waste. They're like, we've got a finite amount of time before the new year. We are getting this done tonight. And I was just like, <laughs> did y'all bring her some cream or something to make sure she wasn't like permanently dry? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's true. I do want to see more lube in romance yeah. in general. And that's, and not just for anal sex. Like, just bring yeah. out the lube. Everyone should carry lube with them at all times. Please, please, please just bring out the lube. Because <laughs> even people that are often wet are not always wet because hormones, people. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> I. <laughs> I gave it a nine because I was sadly missing the orgy scene that I thought was, and that's not just me wanting an orgy in like every romance novel I read. It's the fact that this was the one that could have given it to me. Like Mm -hmm. this one was set up perfectly for the orgy like, and then it just didn't deliver. I was like, is is like, I was like, well, is the husband going to come up? Is the wife going to come up? Is somebody going to come and join while we're partying downstairs and orging? I'm confused. I was waiting for the foursome. I was waiting for a foursome with the friends and it didn't happen. And that's okay. It was still very, very hot. However, I really, uh, I just, I felt let down. And so it's got to be a nine, not a 10. (laughs) I can see it. She just wants to keep us coming back for more. So I'm hoping, and I don't know if there are plans to have more books in this series or not, um, but I'm hoping there are. And God, wouldn't it be just just great to have all of them all together in one book? (laughs) Well, you know what would be great too is if if she has another series and then she can just bring them over. You know how they can go back and forth between the series, like you know how who doesn't love a good crossover? I mean, like with we like we're you know with Amanda's new life, it would be very easy for things to cross over with another series, considering all the changes that are going on. And if she doesn't, then this is just Aaron McLellan fan fiction that we (laughs) are planning out for (laughs) ourselves. So there you go. Okay, Jessica Hannon, host of Deconstructing Damn Schools, <laughs> Jessica Hannon. I know that, you know, your experience and your go-to is generally historical romance, but having read this delightful, you know, contemporary queer read from Erin McClellan, are are you happy with our choice? Yeah, I was actually really, really happy. It was, like I told you before, it was like, this is the first one that wasn't like a Christmas story, because, mm. you know, on Kindle U, a lot of the stuff comes out and you get like the latest or whatever and it's all like christmas because it was around that time that i got my my account and i was like oh this is not christmas so yay i love my christmas ones and i've been reviewing them but still yay and i was like oh yeah and i was like no this is a really good one as because like this is really outside my box is it safe to say then that perhaps you might read a little more contemporary romance in the near future Oh yeah, absolutely. I've got a whole bunch on my Kindle U now. <gasps> Yay! That's actually part of like the the um, challenging damsels I was thing I was talking about is one of the categories is, is um comfort zone be gone. So it's to read more books mm. like this and to challenge myself to to read more. I love that. So it doesn't always have to be like billionaires that are alpha holes and you know 
mafias that are no. out the hold. There's a trend here, if you'll notice. You forgot you forgot the motorcycle clubs as well. That's like right up there. Although I have to say I'm a sucker for a good motorcycle <laughs> mo- motorcycle club romance. <laughs> I didn't forget because the only motorcycle romance I've ever actually written, even though I own a few, is Take a Chance on Me. So Okay. Okay. Well, there you go. There, I mean, that just might need to be the next thing that you check out then is to go from female, female, New Year's Eve, sex positive romance to motorcycle club, probably set somewhere in the South, alpha hole, billionaire romance. And you know, I'm pretty sure that exists somewhere because rule 34 is alive and well. Oh, always. My favorite rule of all. So yeah, well, thank you. Thank you so much for joining me, Jessica Hannon, host of Deconstructing Damsels, Jessica Hannon. Thank you, Carly Reynolds, for inviting me. Yes, of course. I mean, I, this is, you know, the first review episode of the year, and I'm so excited because, like you, I'm trying and planning to read so many books that are outside of my personal comfort zone, whether it's a new to me author or um, a trope that I'm less familiar with or less inclined to pick up generally. Yeah. And, you know, we kind of have a little switcheroo going because I am trying to read a lot more historical romance um, than I did last season. And I think it was. I don't know if it was because of 2020 that I just kind of gravitated more towards comfort, like cozy comfort, um, contemporary reads as opposed to historical. But I, I think after watching Bridgerton and diving into some of my favorite old Lisa Kleypas novels and Cat Martin novels that I am ready to turn a new leaf into historical romance this year. So look for a lot more historical romance reads on the podcast this year. I will pass along any ones that have sexy bits in it to you. You're derailing my TBR list already. <laughs> so I'm going to, we're going to have to cut things off before I get any more recommendations from you. <laughs> Thanks so much for listening. Boobies and Newbies is part of the Frolic Podcast Network. Find more podcasts you'll love at frolic.media slash podcasts. You can follow Boobies and Newbies on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Boobies Podcast.